The president, full suit and tie, mask on, did walk. Now we see the helicopter lifting off, taking President Trump to Walter Reed for what is expected to be a multi-day stay there as he gets through uh, his diagnosis as being positive with COVID-19. Uh, uh, so we do have that. It is important he is taking off to the hospital now. He did walk there on his own accord. That would be a, a good sign. Again, he was wearing a mask, which he does not do often. He did it in this moment, even though we didn't see it on video. There are pictures now online. And now Marine One in the air taking the president to the hospital for a few days to get treatment there as he battles uh, COVID-19. And I think it was just the president, not First Lady Melania Trump. So he, uh, she's going to stay back at the White House while he uh, goes to the hospital for obviously what will be incredible care uh, as the president there uh, for a few days. Uh, that, again, another shot from Marine One moments before it took off. It's now it's on its way to Walter Reed uh, as we speak right now. But this was the footage just in in the last 10 minutes as the president uh, left the White House and got on board. Right. COVID positive or not, the president travels with, as we've heard from Michael Bush and others, uh, a contingent of people, including a military aide who carries the, uh, the codes that we all know about. Also, uh, the doctor. Uh, Secret Service agents, senior advisors, so those are some of the people who got on Marine One for this uh, transport to um, Walter Reed Medical Center. And you can see right now, here is another live picture of the transport in the process right now, being, um, being flown to Walter Reed. So we'll continue. Uh, Joshua Douglas, let's ask another question, perhaps historically. Take us into one of your law classes and answer some of the questions you get about a moment like this. Yeah, I'm sure my class on Monday in election law is going to be very interesting and probably not what, not what I had previously planned to do on the syllabus. Uh, the students are going to want to know about what happens if, you know, hopefully, of course, no one wants this, but if the president were to die uh, before Election Day, can he be replaced on the ballot? Well, the ballots have already been printed. Almost three million people have already voted in the 2020 election. So he'll be on the ballot, but then the question becomes what happens to those votes while well, states uh, vote through the Electoral College, right? We don't elect the president directly. We elect it through the Electoral College in each state. So that raises the question of whether the electors in each state can vote for someone other than the person who wins that state. And that gets, gets to questions regarding, regarding what's so-called faceless electors, electors who decide to vote for someone who hasn't won their state. And we saw this in 2016. And Colorado and Washington, uh, and so it's a real big mess. It's the real answer in terms of how to, how to proceed with all this if you know the uh, extremely unfortunate thing happens. Well, and I just want to remind people at home, if you're just jo just joining us, uh, the president is en route to Walter Reed Medical Center. And by all accounts, uh, we saw him get on Marine One. He waved. Uh, he walked himself onto Marine One. And the White House is telling us he is in good spirits. He has a low-grade fever, mild symptoms, and they're taking him to Walter Reed as a precaution. However, we're talking to Joshua Douglas, a constitutional law expert, about the contingencies in place for every president uh, if something were to happen. And and they were not able to continue their duties. So, uh, Joshua, I will let you continue, but I think it's important that we note uh, that by all indications, the president uh, is okay. He is positive for COVID. There's a reason he's going to Walter Reed. But uh, our nation has, has laws in place, and it has contingency plans in place uh, for every situation. So you have to believe behind the scenes uh, they're working through every scenario uh, so that they are prepared for anything. Uh, we have to think about the what ifs. Of course, we're, we're thinking of the president right now and his health and, and the first lady and her health. But again, continue in, in your statement. I just wanted to, to interject real quickly that the president uh, did walk himself on to Marine One and is, is headed to Walter Reed. And I believe and we're watching now. You know, it is. And, and Joshua, what we're watching right now is a live picture. I'm not quite sure whether you're seeing it where you are. It appears uh, that Marine One you now has landed there at Walter Reed. Obviously, a very short uh, ride. So we do expect momentarily to see President Trump uh, get off. Again, uh, video now and, and pictures have circulated. President again, uh, dark suit, blue tie, presidential uh, a face mask on with the presidential seal, gave the thumbs up, gave a wave very much in view of the cameras. Imagery is important to all presidents. Certainly, President Trump is on that list, so he understood 
I think the power of that moment and letting people know, yes, I have it, but yes, I'm walking on my own. Uh, thumbs up, wave, I'm okay, just doing what I have to get done here. You can see the public there rushing. Uh, they understand that what a kind of surreal and historic moment this is. Cell phones and, and cameras out and for members of the press there documenting this uh, as well. The president, again, expected very shortly as the crowd kind of converges there to get off of Marine One. There's the pilot. He himself, smartly, uh, wearing a mask. Uh, president Trump expected to, to get off there uh, momentarily and begin what is expected to be a multi-day stay there at Walter Reed, what they're describing as a precautionary uh, measure in light of his positive diagnosis uh, and positive test uh, last night. So that was the quick trip from the White House to this uh, medical military facility. Uh, and again, momentarily, the president will be uh, will be stepping out for what's being described as just a few days where he will continue to work from presidential offices that are there at uh, Walter Reed, the president making very clear he is still in charge. There's been no transfer of power um, and again, appear to be in good spirits uh, walking out of the White House. And that's the first time we've seen him since that, you know, alarming and unexpected tweet last night that he indeed tested positive. And uh, I guess we're a few seconds away now from seeing President Trump deplane. And we also know uh, the First Lady has tested positive as well. She is remaining at the White House and in quarantine and being treated. And uh, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has also tested negative for the virus along with his wife. Uh, but they have said that this is a bracing reminder of the seriousness of this virus. Now, we are looking now live at Marine One, as we've said, at Walter Reed Medical Center. No problem. We are Thanks awaiting the president to get off of Marine One. Uh, we saw him walk onto the aircraft and we expect him to walk off here at Walter Reed. Well, we can uh, reset the stage a little bit as well here at about 4.40 Eastern time. Here comes some of the, you can see Mark Meadows, I believe there is standing. Chief of top. Staff Mark yeah. Meadows, yes. And you can see the president inside there through the cockpit. Here comes the president. Blue dude tie, here he comes, yeah. At 4.40, the, the president's doctor said that Mr. Trump was being treated with an experimental drug aimed at supplying essentially antibodies to help fight the coronavirus infection. It's, it's given as a one-time treatment through an IV. The, the president's doctor saying this drug was being given as a precautionary measure and that the president was also taking zinc, uh, vitamin D, uh, and an acid, also melatonin and aspirin. And um, at about 10 minutes later, uh, Democrat Joe Biden said that the president testing positive for the coronavirus is a bracing reminder of the seriousness of the virus. He also says that he has received two tests, and uh, as we mentioned just a short time ago, both of those tests came back negative. Uh, when you do look at this, I mean, according to that, that comment from Joe Biden, it, it is in fact a bracing reminder because this president is perhaps one of the best protected people in the world. Um, so we know he's tested uh, likely every day, everyone who comes within contact with him or, or even close to him. And my experience uh, a week and a half ago when I was at the White House was that there are not a lot of people around him and those who are around him are not necessarily near him, if that makes sense. And one right. thing we know about this virus is it does not discriminate uh, the young, the old, but we do know that it is specifically dangerous for those who are older, who those who have uh, a compromised immune system, who have other medical conditions. We know the president is 74 years old. Uh, he is not a picture of perfect health. However, he is surrounded by the best medical teams. Uh, but his symptoms are mild. Uh, we spoke with Dr. James Baker earlier. He is with the University of Michigan Medical School. And he said the one thing they will really be monitoring with the president, as they would anyone uh, who has COVID and is hospitalized, uh, will be the respiratory issues, that you're looking for anything uh, in trouble with the respiratory tract. You're looking for possibility of pneumonia, that you want to prevent that. Uh, that is when things start to get uh, complicated. So that is one thing that they will be watching. They'll also monitor his blood pressure. We want to remind people we will have full coverage of this extraordinary uh, news event coming up on News Nation, uh, 7 to 10 Central uh, tonight, as we cover, of course, President Trump, his diagnosis, and now uh, his 
been hospitalized for a, a few days uh, and what that means for the country and for the election and so many other things. So full coverage coming up in just about an hour from now Central Time. And I really do think politics aside, seeing the president there, you know, I think anybody right now in the time that we are in with COVID are very nervous. So our thoughts are with the president and the first lady and his family. More coverage tonight on News Nation. See you in an hour.